Okay, now I'm going to very quickly, and it's on YouTube, so you can pause it. I'm very quickly going to run through some tools, tips, and tricks uh, that you need to know or might be helpful when you're doing statistics in R and you uh, need to write up a report and you need to make things look nice. So my first tip or trick is here uh, you've if you've got some results for a regression how do you get them into a paper so they look nice so uh, normally what I'll do is uh, after I do a regression I'll just highlight with the left mouse button on a on a PC anyway my results right click and copy and then I'll usually bring it into Excel and click in Excel and uh, uh, control V to paste them but you can't just stop there because you see everything's not lined up and you see that um, everything's in one cell. The intercept and the estimate standard error, all that is in one cell here. So we need to break it up. And if you haven't done that before, just highlight the, the rows, but just column A here. And then go to data, text to columns. And you can experiment with the delimited or the fixed width. I found that the new version of Excel 2007 does a pretty good job figuring out where the column breaks should be for fixed width. So you can just hit next here. And you want to check to make sure that it is splitting up the columns in the right way. And if it's done it correctly, fine. Or, but you can uh, click on one of these, double click one of these divisions and it'll disappear. You can click and tell it where to divide it. So I'm just going to hit finish since that looks good. And now you see that it's divided everything up into its own individual cells here. And then you can make it look pretty in Excel. And then normally after I make it look pretty in Excel, I'll copy and paste that into a Word document, into a report. So that's one thing. Now the second thing is you need to be able to make a table of summary statistics in R so that you can bring it into your report. Now, one way to do this would be to use R's built-in summary here, where it gives each variable by itself in the minimum, the quartile, median, mean, etc. Now, there's some problems with this. This doesn't look very nice. It'll take you a long time to retype or move everything around let me show you the way I do it. I wrote a little function. You remember our s equals summary function that we used, that we defined? Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit more fancy function here. Now, I recommend that you have your list where you can write these things down. You can pause the YouTube video. And I have two versions here. Here I tell you where to hit enter. Um, for example, at the end of this row, don't hit enter. You just keep uh, typing. Actually, do you hit enter right there? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you do hit enter there. I apologize. Control C. All right, there. Sorry. You hit enter there also. But on this one, uh, this is just one long line. You don't hit enter at the end of, of this row. You just keep going until you get to the end, and then hit, hit enter. Um, only where I have the red parts. Now, or what I normally do, you, I have a uh, Word document where I type some of these little functions and commands. You only have to do this once, but if you reinstall R, you'd have to type all this again. But if you have this in a, a Word document or a text file, you can do what I'm going to do, Control C. So if you hadn't typed this into R already, uh, or written it down, pause it now. Um, you can copy it and then go to R and then just hit Control V and paste it and it enters all that in. Now what did it do? It defined a new function called SumStats. Let me show you how it works. Uh, this little function that I wrote will work on quantitative variables only. So let's look at some quantitative variables here that we might want to summarize like the minimum price, the price, maximum price, miles per gallon city, and miles per gallon highway. If we wanted to summarize those five variables, 
remember our subsetting notation we worked on before, these are the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th variables. So here's how this sum stats formula works. Sum stats and we want to use the car data, cars 93, but only the 4th uh, <clears throat> through the 8th variables, 4 colon 8, using square brackets here for the subsetting notation. And this function that we've defined will now spit out a nice little table that we can now copy and paste into Excel that has the mean, median, standard deviation, minimum, and maximum for these variables. And this is a much nicer, quicker way to do a summary of variables, especially if you have a lot of them. This will just keep stacking variables down below and it makes a nice looking table after you clean it up a little bit in Excel. So that's one command. Um, another command, what if you wanted to put a plot into another document? Well, all you've got to do is, for example, make a histogram of price and uh, have that set to open up in a new window here. Um, pretty easy to just copy and paste it. So you can go uh, file, copy to the clipboard. As a bitmap or a meta file, I usually do a meta file. Uh, it's bigger, but it's a little bit better quality, I've found. And then you can go to a Word document, for example, and then you can just paste it in there. So pretty easy to do that. Now, um, some other tips and tricks that are good to, um, to know. Uh, one option, sometimes what I have found it useful to do, what if you wanted to make a, a lot of plots but put them into one nice uh, group of several plots? Here's how you can do that. A command called par. Par accesses some really high-powered graphing functions. So if you do par m f r o w equals c two comma three, what that does is set up a blank plot with two rows and three columns. What do you do? Well, you just start making graphs like a histogram of the price, and then like a histogram of say another variable. Um, like uh, mpg dot city and then I could do like a uh, plot of two variables like horsepower comma price now let's look and see what is happening in the background here here's our little plot window it's plotting one two three graphs along the top and then it's waiting for three more along the bottom because we gave the dimensions as two comma three. So you could do two comma two, of course, you know, other things. Let me just fill in with the graphs we've already done so you can see what it's going to look like when we're done. And now you have a nice little three columns by two with some graphs and you can copy and paste this into a nice document and uh, so that's an option for some of these uh, high-powered things. Um, one other little uh, command that might be uh, useful is what if you wanted to make a PDF? Well, you can make PDFs directly from R. Here's the command. Uh, PDF, open parentheses, and then you can uh, you need to give a name to the PDF and maybe even a location. So we can do PDF and then um, F colon backslash, you know, a pen drive or whatever else you want to do and call it, I don't know, my PDF one dot PDF in quotation marks. And then for some reason, this new version of R is giving me an error here, but it is working. It, it will work, and I'll show you that. Um, now, if you wanted to make a PDF of a graph, say let's, this histogram of uh, miles per gallon, now you're done. We don't want to, you know, we could add another graph. Let's just do one more. The plot of horsepower and price in our PDF. When you're done, type DEV period OFF 
open, close parentheses, and that turns the PDF off, and then we can go look for our PDF. And here I've opened up this hard drive, and there it's called mypdf1.pdf, and let's wait while my computer opens that, and I'll resize this so you can see. It just makes a nice little PDF of that graph, uh, the first graph, and then there's the second graph on the second page. So easy enough. Now, last command that um, you really need to know when you're using R, a uh, common command, we've seen this before, is ls, open, close parentheses, and that gives a list of all of the things that you've done before, the regressions, the data sets, and the commands.